One month ago, I reviewed this, the brand new Garmin Phoenix 7X, which I'd got to replace my Garmin Phoenix 6X, one of the most important bits of fitness kit that I own. And then just a few days later, I got hold of the Garmin Epix 2, which was released at the same time as the 7, and weighed up whether that would be a better upgrade to the 6 instead. And the conclusion I came to was that the 7X was better than the 6X, and the Epix, while brilliant, and for some maybe even the better choice, wasn't for me. So I kept the 7, sold the 6, and sent the Epix back. 30 days on, do I regret that decision? No, I do not. So does that mean the 7 was worth it? No, not really. So the purpose of this short video is not to explain all the complex features and benefits that the Phoenix 7 has to offer because A, there's just loads of those videos out there already and B, if I do start putting a video like that together, I just get so bored my aura ring thinks I've fallen asleep and logs a daytime nap. Suffice to say, it does everything 99.9% .9 of people are ever going to need and then lots more. Instead, this video is just to answer the question that I've got over and over again since those previous reviews. Am I still happy with my choice? Or if I could make it again with hindsight, would I go a different way? So let's start with the easy one, Phoenix 7 versus the Epix 2. Now, unlike the comparison I'll make in a bit with the old 6X, money isn't gonna be a reason to separate these two because they both cost similar. The site that I use for mine has the 7X on a rubber strap at 859 pounds and the 7 standard size on a rubber strap at 779 pounds. The Epix 2 is then 899 pounds. So they are identical, but if you can afford one, you can probably afford the other. And as well as costing similar amounts, what they can do is largely the same as well. Whatever your sport, either one of these will track more than you could ever need. So software wise, pretty much the same. So if those are not reasons to choose between them, what is? It's a slight oversimplification, but really it comes down to the Epix having an AMOLED screen and the Phoenix having a battery that goes on forever. There's a bit more to it, but not a lot. Now, if you saw previous videos, you'll know that I didn't really need that extra battery life on the 7. So surely with that out of the picture, I should have gone for the fancy screen on the Epix. No, I went for the Phoenix over the Epix because the Phoenix feels to me like a rugged, hardcore tool. The Epix felt like a flashy gadget. And some people say, well, that's daft. You're basically discounting the Epix because it has a nicer, prettier display. For your use, either will do the job, so how can nicer be a bad thing? But sometimes nicer or prettier isn't better. If Arnold swapped this for putting on a $5,000 suit, nicer, prettier, maybe, but it wouldn't be better. By the way, he's wearing a Seiko H558 there. When Seiko updated that a few years ago, they didn't make it pretty, they didn't make it smart, they made it look the same, functional, which is why I bought it. Now looks aside, because I wear a 7X 51mm, which is physically bigger than the Epix 47, and I like big, it was arguably an easier choice for me to go Phoenix than if I was comparing the Epix against the standard size 7. They're both 47mm. But even if I had worn a standard size Phoenix, same dimensions and weight as the Epix, then still for me, I want my iPhone screen to be amazing, my iMac, my TV, my tablet, all those screens amazing, please. I want crystal clear, inky dark blacks, punchy colors, but my sports watch just needs to be clear and functional. I appreciate it's a very personal choice and stating the obvious at this point, before I start on the comparisons with the six, if you do want that fancy AMOLED display, if a modern smartwatch type screen is important to you, then absolutely get the Epix because nothing else is gonna come close to it. It really does look pretty. Just don't expect to rescue your daughter from a lunatic in a chainmail vest while wearing it. Right, the big one, for me at least, was spending out almost 900 pounds on this when I already had the 6X. And that is a choice a lot of you have said that you're also considering. There's a lot of Phoenix 6s out there. And probably thanks to people like Apple, we have gotten very used to wanting the latest version of whatever it is we've got. So am I glad I got this? Yes, but there's no way I can look at the price of a new 6X now, hundreds of pounds less than the 7, and say it's worth it. Even more so if you pick up a U6, because they are going for a few hundred pounds in mint condition. I know, because mine's still for sale. And there are ones like mine clogging up Facebook Marketplace and eBay for dirt cheap money everywhere. When my 6 does sell, I'll be about 600 pounds out of pocket to have upgraded. 
So now you're thinking, make up your mind. You can't be glad you got it and think it's not worth it all at the same time. So there's three things to cover here. How do I define worth it? Why do all the improvements, of which there are many over the six, not make the seven worth it? And if it's not worth it, why am I glad I got it? Okay, worth it. I'm always very careful when I'm reviewing something, especially if it's something expensive, that I don't make the mistake of assuming that everybody has a similar budget and more importantly, a similar willingness to spend their money on what is effectively a hobby, working out, running, cycling, whatever it is you're doing. So things like my kicker bike, my aura ring, even the camera gear that I use for filming YouTube on, I will often say, if it's stuff that I like, that it is good and I deem it worthwhile, but you're gonna to need to make your own decision based on your own resources and priorities. If you've got lots of spare money and really like cycling, for example, then yeah, kick a bike might well be worth it for you. Conversely, if you're flat broke, but love to run, then beyond some decent shoes, anything else could well be poor bang for your buck. So on that basis, why am I happy to say the Phoenix 7 is not worth it? Surely if you're Elon Musk, it will be, no. Elon Musk might well better choose to purchase the seven over the six, as I did, but if he genuinely thought it was worth it, that would indicate that he should step away from any business interests that he has because he's gone mad. Ha <laughs> ha, that's hilarious. Here's the thing that will hopefully explain my problem. These are the main improvements that the seven offers over the six. My 6X did not have solar and the battery was not as good as it now is on the seven. So I now have a better battery and solar power on top. It's winter in the UK right now, so solar power makes pretty much zero difference but the battery life is great. I have every feature on this watch turned on. All the GPS tracking options are on, uh, the screen brightness is on maximum, it comes on automatically with a flick of the wrist. Everything that I can do to drain this battery, I am doing. And yet I'm sticking it on charge occasionally, once every couple of weeks maybe. But the 6X was pretty good too. Maybe I'm going a bit longer before I put this one on charge, but I got a charger lead on my bedside table every now and then I just plug it in for a bit, the same as before. I suppose if I was somebody who let the battery run down to almost expired before charging, then yeah, I'd get more days out of this one. But who does that? Every now and then I just stick the watch and my ring on their little bedside chargers, job done, same as before. But charging is only half the battery story because the other half of course is draining it during an event. Again, the seven will undoubtedly last longer, but I've run all day events with the six, ultra marathons, from before dawn until way past dusk. GPS tracking the whole time, never got close to using up the battery. My six had the stronger sapphire screen glass, but you couldn't get solar power on that screen. If you had solar six, you had the less strong glass, potentially more prone to scratching. Obviously, I now have solar and sapphire, so an improvement, but it's not one that I noticed because I had the better glass before on the six, and I just covered the solar power thing. If you're coming from a six with solar and you struggled with scratches on the glass, then that might be more important for you. I should say, I've always had on the six and now on the seven, a screen protector on anyway, because of the obstacle course races and stuff that I do. So the sapphire glass is just a safety net thing for me. So Garmin have upgraded the GPS and the LED heart rate tracking, and I have no doubt both are improved. The problem is they were both pretty good previously. I've tested the GPS back to back on the six and the seven, and there is a difference. You can literally see what side of the road you're running on with the seven. It will pick up zigzagging down the street. But does that have any value? No, if I'm tracking my pace, my distance, where I am, the watch knowing the exact spot to the inch that I'm standing in is neither here nor there really. Actually, what's more useful that it does do is it'll pick up a satellite signal faster. By that I mean, when I go out the front door, it'll get a satellite lock within 10 seconds of walking out of the house rather than 15. Similar story with the heart rate monitor. My experience with the six and now the seven is that they are both pretty good on the wrist doing steady state activities like jogging, cycling on the rower, but they get a bit flaky when moving the arms around a lot. So if I'm doing maybe a cardio session in the gym, something that involves maybe circuits and dropping down to my hands and knees for doing stuff on the floor, ab wheel or something, I might get some odd numbers. But because of that, nine times out of 10, if I wanna track my heart rate accurately when doing an activity, I use a chest strap. So again, improved, yes. Noticeably, not for me. They look the same. No difference really. I read a couple of reviews recently that said the seven looked more rugged. No, it doesn't. There's a couple of minor design tweaks that are purely cosmetic. If you showed both watches to somebody that had never seen either one before, they would not be able to tell you which was the newer design or beyond personal preference, tell you which one looked better or more rugged. 
they are near enough identical. In fact, the only exception to that is that on the 7, they put these little shoulders around the start button to, in theory, protect it from being accidentally pressed when you pull a jacket on over your arm or put on a backpack or something. That is pretty cool. Whether it actually helps, who knows, but I like it. The stamina feature. This is like the LED lights in my BMW. When I got that car, I sat in it on the drive for hours the first day, programming what color the ambient lighting should glow, depending on whether Jenna or I had used our individual keys to open it up. I thought it was quite important that when I got in the car, it said, welcome Mark on the screen and everything was purple. Rather quickly, that seemed to become less important. So far, that's the stamina feature for me. It's clever. I've used it a few times on some relatively short events. And in fact, I recently took my stamina down to zero doing an intense bike challenge. But I don't have faith in it accurately predicting what I'm doing. And even if I did, I'm not quite sure how I'd use that information. If I have a long run, if I do have a long run coming up in Wales in a few weeks time, if I'm running at a pace that feels right for that distance, and I know I've got say 20K to go, but the stamina feature pops up and tells me that I could do 25 at that pace, am I gonna increase my speed to use up that surplus capacity? That'd be a bold move. It feels like a feature that in 20 years time will just be on every tracking device as standard and 100% accurate. You'll literally be able to pace yourself dependent on what the watch is telling you, maybe eat a snack based on its glucose monitoring or something, and it will then get you to the finish line with exactly the right amount of energy left or not left. Right now, it feels like purple lights in my BMW or blue if Jen's driving. Right, last of the better but not that big a deal improvements is that you can update settings on the watch from your phone. That is a huge improvement. It's really one that should have been there long ago. However, once you have set up the watch, you don't actually tend to do much with it beyond that. And if you do, it's normally small tweaks that are sometimes quicker to do on the watch itself. For example, the other day I was out for a run, I noticed that my 1K auto lap was not turned on. I turned it off because I'd been doing an indoor event and I didn't need it for that. So to jump into the run settings and turn that back on took 15 or 20 seconds on the watch. It had taken me at least that long just to load up the Garmin Connect app on the phone. So for the initial setup, it's very, very handy. It's just not something that you're gonna actually take advantage of very often unless you just like to change your settings a lot. So it's good, but you won't use it much. Okay, the last three differences, and really the only reasons I can stand behind as justifications to myself almost, for being happier that I have the seven than if I was still wearing the six. Because if it was only the points I've already gone through, I think I'd be suffering a little bit of buyer's remorse right now, probably about 600 pounds worth. Available on the seven X only is a little LED that can be switched on from white to red, can even vary its intensity, can even have it flashing in unison with your arms moving as a warning to people in the dark not to drive over your head when you're out for a run. And it is, a thousand times more useful than purple lights in the BMW. I am not kidding, I use it every day. Sitting at the bottom of my gym bag to get something out of there, going to bed late at night when turning on a light would disturb the house. I mean, you don't need examples of when finding light might be handy. Whenever I want it, I've got it and it's brilliant. In fact, let me give you a demonstration. So it's dark outside. So when I turn off the lights, we are now pitch black. Okay, it is dawning on me that this might not be the best demonstration of the LED light on a Phoenix 7X. Uh, trust me, it is actually pretty useful. I like it. If I had to go back to the 6, I'd miss it. Right, if the light was something that I thought was going to be a complete gimmick, but actually turned out to be really useful, then the touch screen is almost the reverse. There's nothing wrong with it. It works exactly as you would expect it would work. It's responsive, it's quick, it makes the watch feel much more up to date. It's everything you'd think a modern touchscreen would be. And at 51 mils on the X, it's very simple to use, lots of space there for fat fingers. But I have to be honest, I don't use it anywhere near as much as I thought I would do. Nine times out of 10, I'll default to the buttons. Now that could be because I spent years using previous versions without a touchscreen. So I'm just very comfortable with going to the buttons and knowing what does what on a Phoenix. If this was my first Phoenix, then maybe I'd be more inclined to move around using the screen. Having said that, there are a couple of times when I will go to the screen. The first is quick access to various settings from the standard watch display. So for example, jumping straight to my VO2 max or indeed any of the information that's on that home screen can be tapped on to take you into further details. It's far quicker than going through the buttons for that. It's also quicker for scrolling through things. You can just flick and scroll. But for the most part, it's not quite as exciting as a feature as I thought it might be. 
However, where the screen shines, as much as a screen on a Phoenix can shine, is how it works with maps. That elevates it to highly useful. Navigating around maps on the old six was an absolute chore to the extent that I wouldn't even bother trying to do so half the time. Now I can easily move around the map the way you would on any smart device. I've got this mountain race coming up in a couple of weeks time with Nixon in Wales. I've done that race before wearing the six and going into it this time with a seven, I don't expect battery life or GPS tracking or the stamina feature to be features that make any real difference to my use of the device during the event. But being able to move around the map, check my position, make sure I'm on the right path, that is something I'm actually looking forward to being able to do with this. And the last difference is that this is the latest and best version. And really, that is the thing that tips it over the line for me into glad I got it versus wish I'd sent it back and kept the six. Because if it wasn't for that, that rather stupid desire to just simply know that I've got the best sports watch on my wrist that is out there, I don't think any of the other features would have been enough. Even the torch and the touch screen with the map, they aren't worth hundreds and hundreds of pounds, not in my opinion. So what should you do if you're considering a six, a seven or the epics? Well, bearing in mind, I'm not your mum, so make your own mind up. If you love the fancy screen, it's gotta be the epics, simple choice. If the screen is not a big deal for you, or like me, you actively don't want it, then a second hand mint condition 6X at a few hundred pound is a brilliant watch at an amazing price. And a 7X at 900 pound is a tiny bit more brilliant and a lot more money. And no matter how much money you have, a tiny bit more doesn't really equal lots more money. So picking the seven over the six should only really be done if you're actually in need of one of the features that isn't important to me. For example, maybe you are a multi-day hiker and that huge battery life and solar power this thing has is important to you, or you just like having the latest and best kit, even if common sense says that doesn't really add up. And that is obviously fine. Not everything you buy has to be worth it or sensible even. Some things are just wanted. And as long as you aren't robbing banks or selling your kids, that's fine, crack on. If you are selling your kids, I hope you have more luck doing so than I am having with that. Okay, I'm done with reviews on the initial purchase of this at least, but I will update from time to time on how I'm getting on with it. For example, it will certainly feature in that mountain race with Nixon that I've got coming up in a couple of weeks time and data from it pops up in most of my videos that cover any activity I've done. So you are gonna hear if my opinion on it changes or if any of the features become more important to me over time. Oh, and before I go, lots of you are always asking where I get all my multicolored straps from Amazon and the cheapest ones I can find. Never seen any difference between expensive ones and cheap ones. Someone did say to me the other day, would Arnold wear a neon green strap? It's a fair point, but it does ignore the fact that I've just ordered a dark green one for when I go on missions. Right, please subscribe. We're almost at 50,000, which is amazing and mad all at once. Uh, drop this a like and I'll see you on the next one.